everyone. God bless you. I'm here to share a very important uh, revelation that God has given me a couple of days ago. Uh, God woke me up very early in the morning, about 5:30. I went in the backyard. Um, I heard something like a, like 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 a song somewhere, but I don't know if it's coming from TV, but something like a a, a sweet sound. So I went in the backyard and looking at it, if there's somebody like singing in, by my field in the backyard. And I look up the sky, I see a shimmering light coming from above. And God has spoken to me. I thought this has only happened on God spoke to Moses. God spoke to, uh, I mean, audible voice. They, they hear audible voice. Paul, I didn't hear an audible voice. But, but in my spirit, God spoke to me in my spirit. And I need to reveal this to you. He told me that look up here. Your spirit is right here. That's what the voice saying to me. That my spirit is in the third heaven. I said, am I dead or something? I look at my body. I'm still physically fit. What, what is trying to say that I'm like in the third heaven because there is a heaven. God dwelleth in the third heaven. There is, that is the throne of grace. Okay, so there are a lot of misinterpretation. This is the revelation of God. He's trying to say that I'm in the upper room. Upper room is the third heaven. As you can see, the upper room was 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 given in the mount of zion so the upper room the holy spirit came when three thousand people saved when peter preached and they spoken in tongues that's when the holy spirit came in the upper room jesus gave this the last supper the breaking of bread and the washing of feet of his 12 disciples in the upper room, that's when John the Beloved lay, laying down in his bosom. In the upper room, that's when he revealed there is a rapture. Because he said, um, don't you let your heart be troubled. In my father's house, there are many mansions. And if I have to prepare a place for you, I will come again. When you say, I will come again, that is the rapture. So he's spoken in the upper room. So now, where is the upper room? I, 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 keep, I, I prayed, Lord, reveal to me what you meant that I'm right here in the third heaven, which is the upper room. That's all I can say. So I, and, I, and he, he told me in my spirit, go back in your house and open Ephesians chapter 2. Now I open Ephesians chapter 2. And in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 said, But God, I am not just saying it in my own words. I have to use the Bible to get it right, okay? I, because God is not a God of error and confusion. Ephesians 2, verse 4, But God who is rich in mercy... For his great love, wherewith he love us, past tense, love us, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace, ye are saved. So many Christians would say, I'm just a sinner. I'm saved by grace. See, I'm just a sinner. So the word sinner, you categorize yourself is still a sinner and you are saved by grace and had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus the moment that he got resurrected he looked at us as righteous to those who believe that's why he said you become born again I have to read some Bible verses so that you will not say that I'm just bluffing you. So he had raised us up together, raised is past tense, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
that is his goal for us so that we become sons and children of God that in the ages to come verse 7 he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ for by grace ye are saved through faith and not of yourself it is a gift of God not a words lest any man should boast okay don't just say I'm saved by grace I'm still a sinner so you have you categorize yourself as a sinner when he died he died he fulfilled the law he said that he he purchased our sins so now he he raised us up together when he was resurrected he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and we've been talking about Galatians 5 we go to Galatians 5 that the Galatians 5 I, I was I was preaching that in Galatians 5 I think in the other on the other Sunday or other Sundays you know on Galatians 5 these are the contrast of flesh and spirit first of all on John 3 before we go okay to Galatians 5 we go to John 3 we gotta do it step by step if, if we're in heavenly places we are in the upper room next to him so when we sing praises to God we sing with the angels and the saints of God although we are flesh but we are dead in flesh we are alive in Christ in spirit so we are that's why he said give us this day our daily bread i don't know if my my, my nose is itching uh, 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 thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven so he wants his kingdom reign as it is in heaven reign on earth as it is in heaven that's what it, it Teach for preach the way they teach for uh, for his prayer what i mean but if you look at john let's go to john on john 3 let's go to john 3 uh, when he was talking to nicodemus he said that in verse 3 except a man be born again you cannot see the kingdom of god that's a requirement and then he said again in verse 1 very very except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God the water cleanses all from all unrighteousness in spirit you must be born again in spirit it means that it's not your flesh who is born again your spirit being because our body is just a box like I said you our body is composed of body uh, soul and spirit the real you is your spirit being the spirit being that's the real you you born in the spirit the born the which is born of flesh is flesh and which is born of the spirit is spirit so these are contrasts if you're born in flesh you are easily bound to sin if you say i'm still a sinner no one is perfect you were once sinner from adam you are dead it, it brings death so you are uh, everyone are sinners we were born all sinners but once jesus christ purchase purchase our sin random our sin and you believe what he has done at the cross you are saved by grace through faith you believe in your heart faith that jesus saved you then you must be born again you are living in spirit so the flesh and spirit are contrasts okay we have to be, remember if you believe if you if the, the right doctrine leads you to right believing and right living if you believe if you if a wrong doctrine put, put, put on you you were in tradition you're still a sinner you're still a sinner so you will have a tendency to sin now and then yeah but sis i have the old nature still that's why you're sinning because you keep saying that you have the old nature and i will explain to you more about it what paul paul write the whole the uh, one more than half of the bible paul because that's the revelation of christ it's the word of god is the word of jesus christ himself whatever he wrote because remember uh, jesus christ appeared to him in uh, in the road of damascus 
That which is born of flesh is flesh, and which is born of the spirit is spirit. So you choose. You want to born in flesh, then you be a sinful man. You want to born in spirit, then you have to be born in Christ. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, thou hearest the sound thereof. Okay, you must be born again. There is a contrast between flesh and spirit. Now if you go to Galatians, let's go to Galatians now. On Galatians chapter chapter one, this is there. The chapter chapter five, verse seventeen. Okay, for the flesh lusted against the spirit. So you cannot combine. If you're walking in flesh, you are bound to sin. If you're walking in spirit, you cannot sin because you are identical to Christ. You you cannot sin. You're born in spirit. And these are contrary to one to the other, so that you cannot do things that you would. So now you would say, how can Paul said in Romans that whatever I do, what, what whatever I don't like to do, I do it, and whatever I don't like to do, whatever I don't like to do, I do it. Whatever I like to do, I don't do it. Paul is not saying that, like like when when he met Christ, that's not him. He was comparing your old nature. When your old nature, when your sin reign on you, when you're walking in flesh, then it means you are subject to sin. You can sin. And, and that equivalent to death. If ye led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. That's what in Galatians 5 verse 18. Why? The law is perfect and holy. Only God. Who fulfilled the law? Jesus Christ himself. That's why you cannot follow all these commandments, including the Ten Commandments. It's, it's not possible. That's a standard of God. If you break one law, you break them all. That's the standard of God. Perfect. And so, he, and so Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. Why we don't need to, to follow the commandments? Because Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. Why do you follow it when Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. The commandments came so that they show you that you cannot follow it. You and me needs a savior. Either you 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 follow it 100% to be perfect or you cannot follow it. You realize yourself that you need a savior which is our Lord Jesus Christ. If ye led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Galatians 5 verse 18. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are this, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, plus viciousness, idolatry, witchcraft, love of idolatry, money, phones, uh, somebody else, they talk about personalities, you idolize them, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, strife, a lot of angry, seditions, heresies, Envyings, murders, drunkenness, rebellions, and such like which I tell you before, as I have told you in the past, they that which do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You cannot inherit the kingdom of God because these are sinful nature. The nature of a dog is they wag their tail when their master came. The nature of the dog is they hump each other to, to have sex because that's the nature of the dog. Your nature as a sinful man, your nature as a sinful man is to sin because that's your nature. But when Jesus Christ came, he changed all the agenda. The agenda changed when Jesus Christ came. Before the cross is different, but after the cross, the agenda, the agenda of Christ is different. He changed everything after the cross. After the cross, so these are these are the works of the flesh. It means these are your enemies. When someone is angry with you, you're not fighting with that person. It's the spirit. This the spirit of anger is your enemies. The spirit of jealousy is your enemy. The, the spirit of, of variance, the uh, spirit of drunkenness, those are your enemy. The works of the flesh are your enemies. The spirit of division, these are your enemies. A spirit of anger, a spirit of, of any kind of spirit that is not of God is 
negative spirit, a spirit of double mind, a spirit of mammon, loving idolatry, loving money, loving loving other people, loving idolizing people instead of God. That's a spirit. These are your enemies. So the flesh is your enemy. But you are not, you're living in your flesh right now. Yes, you're living in your flesh. But I live now in the spirit of God. It means that I live with him. God lives inside of me. What makes you a Christian is not being good or going to church, paying the tithes. What makes you a Christian? Christ lives inside of you. And you are in together in. We raise us up together. Sit in together. Together. So always next to me right now. My way of thinking, my way of imagining is I am on the third heaven in the spirit realm of Christ where I sing together with the angels and the saints of God together with the, with the spirit of my dead loved ones who are in heaven. That's my spirit. But now, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against, against. There's such no law. So everything, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you can see it on born-again Christian. If the fruit of the Holy Spirit is not on the on born-again Christian, he's a liar. He's not a born-again. A born-again Christian, you can see the fruit of of the Holy Spirit. There is a fruit because you're born again. You have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's why you are born again. The born again spirit have all this. Now, so now uh, in, um, in Ephesians, the one that we read a while ago, Ephesians, that we sit us up together. There's something I've read here. On Ephesians chapter one, verse seven, in whom we have redemption through his blood, Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin, right? We have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of His grace. So He has forgiven our sin, past, present, and future. But you're gonna say, but but since I still sin, yeah, you still sin because you let sin govern over you. But you are now the righteousness of God. What does it say on 2 Corinthians? Let's see that. 2 Corinthians 15 verse 17. Let's see that. Let's see that on 2 Corinthians uh, 17. Second, uh, I believe, 2 Corinthians. What does it say there? Let's, let's go there in 2 Corinthians. I have to read it so that you will not say that I'm bluffing you or anything. Uh, okay. Okay, so it, said, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, He had made him be sin for us. He became a sin for you. So if he became a sin for you, he don't want you to sin. He said he had made him to be sin for us, sin, S-I-N, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God of him. So he, he looked at us righteous, when he was resurrected otherwise he will not be resurrected if he don't look at you righteous the law of moses the commandments will not make you righteous it is just like a just like a map where it leads you it's a shadow of our lord jesus christ it's a map that leads you to obey but obey your effort but you can't obey it because you are sinner, uh, uh, you're born sinner, and no one can obey it except our Lord Jesus Christ, who fulfilled the law. Christ is a fulfillment of the law. He had made him be sin for us. So how can he be sin for us? So that you and me will not be a sinner anymore. Who knew no sin, Jesus Christ, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. If you believe that you are the righteousness of God, it's impossible for you to sin, baby. It's impossible for you to sin if, if you believe that. So we keep moving, you know. Um, in 1 John 2 verse 16, what is worldly? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. These are all worldly things. These are all, if, you be, if you're walking that worldly, then, then you are a sinner. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. You still identify yourself as a sinner. So that's why you're sinning. I still, I'm, I'm, I still have the old nature. Yeah, it says that you have the old nature. 
that's why you're sinning you will not stop being tempted or being to sin to sin because you still accept that you're still a sinner okay so remember it, it, it said here in Psalm 21 and uh, 91 he that dwelleth in the secret secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty he that dwelleth in the secret place the secret place is the upper room is the, uh, the, the the one that god dwelleth you're dwelling there too in his presence it means that he got you shall abide under the almighty the shadow of the almighty and i will say of the lord he's my refuge and my fortress in whom we in god will i trust psalm 91 verse 1 to 2 right there right so uh, remember even the breaking of bread is done in the upper room the coming of the holy spirit they spoke in tongues in the upper room is full of lights <laughs> when they spoke in tongues there's that's a light is speaking in tongues it's full of lights there's no darkness there okay um uh, uh so let's move on what, what am i doing now I, I, like a couple of minutes remember elijah Elijah and the, and the lady before that he visited, he, her son died. Elijah brought her son to the upper room, to the upper room, to the presence of God. Any problem that you have, you bring it to the upper room. It means that you're resting. John the Beloved resting. I give it to you, Lord. I can't do it. I'm in the upper room in your presence. You got me. You got me. Of course, we have trials and tribulation. You have to face them. But if you believe that you're in the presence of God, you're in the upper room, what man can do for you? The Lord is on your side. You will not fear. What man can do for you? Nothing. Right? So that, that's what it says, uh, I think, in, in Proverbs, uh, Psalm 118, verse 16. I believe that. Let's go to Hebrew. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, Hebrews 10, remember 1 John 5 said, herein is our love, 1 John 4, verse 17, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, and so are we in this world, as he is, and so are we in this world. Where is he now? Sitting at the right hand of the Father, and we're sitting next to him, as he is, is he sick? No, is he powerful? Yes, we have the power over the devil. Is he is he okay? Yes. If he is okay, then you're okay. As he is, and so are we in this world. Whatever he has done on earth, you can do it too. Greater things you can do because I'm going to my father. As he is, and so are we in this world. Meaning we are identical to Christ. I am identical to Christ. It, whatever he is, remember when he comes back again. He, we will be raptured. We will have bodies. We will have glorified bodies by then. We will have bodies by then. We will have glorified bodies. But now in your spirit, you believe that you dwell in His presence. We, you dwell in the, in the upper room. Because in the upper room, there's no chaos there. There is no works of the flesh. You are walking in spirit. Okay, let's go to Hebrew. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. I know I mark it in my Bible, Hebrews 10. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus. In Hebrews 10, if I'm not mistaken, let's go Hebrews 10, verse 20, 26. Hebrews 10, verse 26. If we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of truth. What is the knowledge of truth? Jesus is the knowledge of truth. He saved you from all unrighteousness. He gave you righteousness. He fulfilled the law. He is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. If you sin willfully after you have received the knowledge of truth, there remained no more sacrifice for sins. If you understand this like you like a stupidity, you will think that, oh, I sin, I'm growing to hell. That's what you are thinking. There is no more chance for me because I sin, I'm going to hell. No, it didn't say that. If you sin willfully after you have received the knowledge of the truth that salvation has been done, there remained no more sacrifice for sin. You sin because you did not believe 
what he has done for you. That's why you are prone of sinning because you do not believe, oh no, I accepted Jesus Christ already, but I'm still sinning because you, you still believe that you are a sinner. You still an old man with a sinful nature. That's a wrong doctrine. You're no longer a sinner once you are born again. You are no longer how that can be. I'm still a sinner, sold under sin. Yes, you are an old nature. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Pass away. That's what Paul is trying to say after the cross. Paul is trying to say it's about Jesus Christ as the center because Jesus Christ himself is talking. So if, if you, you say willfully after you have received the knowledge of truth, there remain it no more sacrifices. It means that you're still waiting for another Savior to save you. Uh, that's unbelief. You did not believe what Jesus Christ has done for you. No wonder why you continue to sin. Because you do not believe what he has done for you. Even though you said you claim that you're a Christian, you're saved, you're born again. You, one minute or another, you sin again because you believe that you still have an old nature. That's not how born again is. It says the contrast. He says that he that liveth in spirit is spirit. He that is liveth in flesh is flesh. That's what he says in John 3. So, right? So, let's go to... Uh, to First Corinthians one thirty. Actually, I re I dream this verse because well, I was dreaming one day and my father came. My father will pass away, and he told me, "Tell to your brothers that this is the gospel." That's what my father said. But I believe that is not my dad that I saw. It's just the image of my dad. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. It says you First Corinthians one verse thirty. Of him ye are in Christ. What is of him ye are in Christ because of Jesus Christ you are in Christ in inside who of God is made unto us how we made unto us through our Lord Jesus Christ that's why nobody gets the glory and the grace because he did all these works you did not do it he used a lot of Christians still finishing the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because you know what? They want their glory instead of our Lord Jesus Christ. But of him ye are in Christ Jesus, of who God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Made us wisdom in the upper room is wisdom. Wisdom means when you do not know what you what you want to do and you don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit will guide you. That's why we are in the upper room. Wisdom, you know how to how to deal with your life. You know what is right and what is wrong. You have wisdom. You are not gonna be a scam by anyone because you have wisdom righteousness so we are right in the sight of god righteousness sanctification we are holy you don't need to struggle to be holy i am already holy god made me holy through our lord jesus christ first corinthians 1 verse 30 sanctification and redemption i am redeemed by the blood of the lamb i'm no longer a sinner i am now a new creation i have a newness in spirit now we're going to our last last study up here teaching in romans 6 verse romans 6 uh, let me just read it in romans 6 it says that what shall we say then Paul is asking, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Can you, will you continue to sin so that grace may abound? May abound? Okay, this is the answer. God forbid. Verse 2, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Okay, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? Can, can we continue sinning so that grace may abound? God forbid no how can you sin if you're dead to sin Paul said you are dead to sin 
How can you be dead to sin if you're still saying you're a sinner? You are dead to sin because of what Jesus Christ has done for you and me. That's why you are dead. The old man is gone. That's why you are new creation. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. So we are together on his burial, 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 his death. We were together with him in his rich, in his crucifixion. We were together with him in his resurrection. We are caught up together with him. We we were together with him. We are connected. Whatever he did it, it is, we are together. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we all should walk in the newness in life. It's clear. We buried in him baptism into death. What we buried? Our sinful nature. Uh, the old man, the sin nature, your sinful nature is to sin. Like I said, everybody have a nature. The bird's nature is to tweet, tweet, tweet. The dog's nature is to wag, wag, wag. Your, your sinful nature is to sin. Nobody says that we were buried with him, but this into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even also we should walk in newness in life. So if you're dead to sin, you should walk in the newness of life. For we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So we should be like him. We are identical with him. That's why when he comes back, we will have a glorified body born again, just like him. Even now, we are now the same as our Lord Jesus Christ. We are now in the likeness in of this resurrection. And knowing this, that our old man is crucified. Verse 6, chapter, Romans 6, verse 6. You have to open your Bible as an open mind. Romans 6, verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin you should not serve sin why are you serving sin it's not because you're not born again because he said you have not renew your mind transform renew your mind that's what it says in romans 2 renewing your mind is everything renew your mind update it upgraded we have now a new computer updated we have now a new telephone updated newness you have to have a new brand new you should not serve sin you're serving sin because you have not updated your mind your mind is still i'm just saved and I'm, I'm just saved by grace i'm just a sinner saved by grace Again, you continue sinning. I'm just a sinner. I'm just a sinner. I'm just an old man sinner. You keep saying that. That's why you're prone of sinning. For he that is, for he that is dead is freed from sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. He he made it us openly. He destroyed the law. The law will make will not make you righteous. He destroyed it. He destroyed our sinful nature at the cross. It's dead. Why are you sinning? Because even if you say you're born again, because your identification has not changed. Change your ID. Go to the motor vehicle and get a new ID. Change it. You are now the righteousness of God. Now let's go. First Corinthians. 7 to 7 uh, 6 18 verse chapter 6 verse 18 being then made free from sin you became the servants of righteousness righteousness since you are made free from sin you are now servants of righteousness you are the righteousness of god and now you're gonna say argue with me what if i made a mistake you can make a mistake you can say foul words maybe you made a mistake that's your flesh but you can just say, hey, I'm already saved. I believe I am the righteousness of God. 
I am the uh, I, that that's just a mistake. And I know you cannot make a big mistake when you're born again. You hate sinning. You dislike sinning. You don't want to go fornication. You don't, don't want to go for, for for adultery. You don't want to go and murder. You want to go there and rob things. No, because you're born again. You are walking in spirit, not in flesh anymore. Like I said, this flesh is your enemy. That's why Jesus Christ sit down until I put your enemy at your footstool. Just sit down, relax. Don't be angry. Don't be anxious for many things. Sit down, relax. I got you. Okay. Romans 7, verse 1 to 7. For the woman which had a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he leave it. But if the husband be dead, she's loose from the law of her husband. husband. So if you're married you cannot remarry until your husband or your wife is dead if they're dead you are free to marry it's not a sin anymore that's what it says in chapter 7. so then if while her husband leaveth she be married to another man she shall be called an adulteress but if her husband be dead she's free from the law so that she is no adulteress though she married to another man right now the law is dead your sinful nature is dead so right now we are married to christ what are you doing going back to the dead man resurrecting it and you're still married to him the dead man is dead the dead man the old dead man your sinful nature from adam is dead you only know this if you're born again christian that's why it's important to be born again again he said that he that that he that that that, that believe it what, what that says in gentry let's go back gentry gentry said again uh Gen, uh gentry says that again that he chapter 3 verse 6 the, he that is born of flesh is flesh we were born flesh right but which is born of the spirit is spirit this is just a body this is not me my real me is my spirit i live in the upper room in the presence of god when the angels sing i sing when i pray songs the angels together with me and and the saints of god and my dead loved ones who are dead they're singing with me in the presence of god their fullness of joy I can see everything in the presence, the Spirit of God. He, he dwelleth in me and shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge and my fortress. In God, in Him will I trust. He got me. I have trials and tribulation in this life. There's temptation in this life, but God got me. He, no good things will come out inside of me and no bad things will come in inside of me. I am washed and covered by the blood of the Lamb because I'm walking in spirit. The devil don't want me. The devil don't want to live inside of me because he knows that I live in the presence of God. You understand that? Let's uh, let's read the last the, the 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 one again that I said about Ephesians. So you and me, if you're born again, live in the upper room. But then if you still if you still look at yourself as a sinful, with a sinful nature, you still, I, I, I am, I am, I am, I'm saved by grace only. I'm just a sinner. I'm, I, I'm saved by grace only. You still have that kind of identity that you're a sinner. Then you are prone to sin. My battery is about to die, but hold on one second. Let me just put on the this thing because I don't want to go without telling you this so now here on Ephesians 2 verse 5 again for but, but, but for but God who is rich in mercy for his great love we're with he love us he has a great love he love us even we were dead in sins even we were dead in sins are you dead in sins if you say yes then you are born again if you are, are you dead in sins? If you're born again and you still believe that you still have a sinful nature, renew your mind. You have to have change it. Change your mind that you still have a sinful nature. 
has quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved, who had raised us up together. Raised, R-A-I-S-E-D, raised, passed us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. My spirit right now is on third heaven. It's in the upper room. My spirit, my spirit, that's what the spirit is long, my spirit is longing for. That's what my spirit is hanging for. That's where my spirit, I'm, 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 I'm laying down in the bosom of Jesus. My spirit is together with the saints of God. My spirit is together with the angels in heaven. My spirit is with Christ. Christ lives inside of me. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward through Jesus Christ. For by grace you are saved. By grace. By grace you are saved through faith, not of yourself. It is a gift of God. That's why there is no glorification in the grace of God. You see, they're still looking at sin, sin, you're sinner, you sinner, you sinner. Hell, hell, hell. And yeah, hell is reality. But if you keep focusing, focusing on sin, sin, I'm still a sinner. I'm still of a sinful nature. I still sin, I still sin. Then you will really be sinning because you have not changed your identity that you're the righteousness of God. And then, and still, you believe, still believe that I can still sin. Where is your spirit? I'm a spirit being. You always say, I'm a spirit being. God has raised me up together with him. Okay? This is all. It's going on. So, Father in heaven, we want to thank you for today, Lord, for this revelation. Thank you, Lord, for raising us up together and sitting us up together with you in heavenly places. Thank you for the upper room, Lord, where we can dwell in you and we can sit there and relax and you know everything, what's going on in our life, our bills to pay, our trials and tribulations, our problems, our drama in life. You know it, but we believe in you that you got us because our spirit lives in the upper room inside of you if we are dwelling in the presence of you so whatever you do as he is and so are we in this world we can command the devil to leave we have we have the authority over the devil the devil is afraid of you because he sees the blood of jesus inside of you it's freak out and we know how to say in the name of jesus thank you father god Thank you for this wonderful thing, what you have finished at the cross. I am your child and the born again the spirit. I want to thank you, Lord, until you come back again. I will have a glorified body, a glorified body just like you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I give you praise. I give you honor. I am heaven bound. I am straightly heaven bound. Thank you, Father God. I hope you are too. So if you're born again, you accepted our Lord Jesus Christ, it's time to renew your mind. The dead is dead. Whatever is the, what, what, if, if the, the gods, if, if God set you free, you will be free indeed. The old man is gone. You are dead to sin. Do not revive anymore. God bless you. Have a good day. Have a wonderful day. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.